All right, fighthype.com. Sean Zatel here with undefeated super bantamweight Raiz Salim coming in red hot after knocking out Vic Pasillas over the weekend on Showtime. Uh, Raiz, man, that was your seventh knockout in a row, seventh stoppage in a row. What's going on? How you getting? Man, hey, you know, it, it's been absolutely amazing, you know, and I didn't really think about it until uh, my promoter told me, you know, because uh, going into the fight, he told me, or like the day before, he was like, oh, you, you've had like six knockouts in a row. I'm like, damn, that's that's true. You know, it's like it's stuff I don't really think about until I sit down and really think about it. You know, so to not only have, uh, have won, but to score that stoppage with it, oh uh, man, it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing. How, how much is you know, uh, how much is does your old old school martial arts background play in to to the boxing these days? Well, um, I, I feel like it uh it helps me uh be humble. You know, uh. I proceed with caution, uh, but but also my footwork, you know, being able to get in, get out, go left, go right, do this, do that, uh, being more than one-dimensional. Right. It seems like with Cobra Kai, like that old school martial arts is getting love again, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, what did you get a chance to get back and catch the main event? What did you think of uh, Stephen Fulton and Angelo Leo? I thought that was a hell of a fight. You know, I have a lot of respect for uh, Angelo Leo and his dad. Uh, Stephen Fulton, he, he fought a, a great fight. He came out with a, a great game plan. You know, he beat Angelo Leo at his own game, what he does best, and he beat him. So, but the fact that, like, at the end of 12, he wasn't even breathing, wasn't tired, nothing. It's like, okay, you know, his cardio, his strength, conditioning, it's on another level, which is uh, good for him. A lot of people watched that fight and they said, damn, he's better than we thought. Did you say that to yourself after watching the fight? Uh, well, you know, styles make fights. You know, I, I think Fulton's a hell of a fighter. Uh, you know, the the only thing I can say, there's no way he can go forehead to forehead with me for 12 rounds and not not stop him. I just, I, I refuse to believe that. Um, but with that being said, yeah, he's a hell of a fighter. Uh, I assumed he was going to come out boxing. Uh, he, great fighter. So, So you said if he tries to go heads up like that, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe that you could get a stoppage if, if he approached I, that way. Well, you know, there's a lot of clean punches being thrown that, you know, nobody nobody got staggered, nobody dropped. Uh, there was a cut in the fight, but I think that might have came from a headbutt. Just consistently, 12 consistent rounds of, you know, it's you don't want to put your body through that regardless. You know, I don't want to get into a lot of wars, but if I had to, you know, somebody's got to drop. <laughs> So is that how you do you think that fight would play out more like a toe to toe fight or, or more a chess match? Uh, between Fult me and Fulton. Yep. Uh, you know it it'd probably be more of a chess match. It'd probably be more of a chess match, I would assume. But you know who knows? I I would be prepared for for anything. Is there something you feel you could say for certain you, you have an advantage over him with as a fighter? Uh, Stephen Fulton, being diverse, uh, I, I feel like uh, I'm sh I'm a stronger fighter. I feel like uh, you know he has great skills. It's you know it, it's hard to say he has great skills. He has a high boxing IQ. You know I have extremely high boxing IQ. I'm I'm extremely durable. I have a I, you know I have a hell of a chin. Uh, it, it's hard it's hard to say. You know uh, he is the champ, but uh. Yeah, I would love to take his belt from him. Yeah, it's just it's a hell of a matchup that had people wondering if it's next or you know just it, it, it's you know it can it it very well could be. I would take that fight next. I don't know if he would, but I'd take it. Uh, I would also take uh, Lewis Neary. You know, I would take that fight. Akhmadalia, he has two of the belts and the super belt. That's the fight that I like would love. I, I know you've you've said that, and of course it makes sense because he's got the two titles where everyone else has won. But do you think, though, that fights with Brandon Figueroa, Stephen Fulton, Luis Neri, those are bigger fights, you, you know? Uh, well, those are those are big fights, uh, especially, you know, because they all have – In recognition, you know, because they're from America and Mexico, whereas Ahmed Aliyev's from Uzbekistan, and you know. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, if, you think of, if you think of it like that, yeah, probably. Yeah, those are probably bigger fights that could be made. But um, the uh, 
being undisputed, having the, you know, the super belt and, you know, that, that is like, you know, that's what we're all in it for. You know, I want to win, you know, I want to beat the best. And uh, all those guys are on my list. So at some point in time, we're going to meet and I'm going to beat them. Well, I mean, you and Figueroa are ranked pretty, you know, side by side by the WBA. Um, what do you think of that fight? And do you think, you know, not to play manager, but do you think they'd really want to put a tall, you know, pretty boy, good looking kid in with a guy who's peaking right now and can fight on the move and all those things? Do you think they'd um, keep Figueroa away from you? It's possible. You know, I, I heard that, uh, you know, just through the grapevine or whatever that, you know, they, they, they try to protect Figueroa and put him in with easy fights and whatnot. You know, who knows if that's really true. I'd be willing to fight him. Just, at some point in time, uh, he, he won't have a choice, you know, whether it's him or Akhmedalia, Louis Neary, Stephen Fulton. You know, I, I, I just won my first interim title. Uh, so I believe I'm a mandatory. And if that's Brandon Figueroa, I'm ready. Uh, any of the current world champions. And, and Neary, you know, is known as that dangerous guy with the power, but he's coming up in weight, right? So Well, we'll see, that's the thing. You know, he's coming up from 18. Uh, mm -hmm. I watched his last fight. You know, he went the distance with a southpaw. You know, it's kind of hard to gauge that because I'm orthodox, but I wasn't impressed. I didn't see anything that I'm like, fuck. You know, like, I, you know, I'm just... I just wasn't impressed. Like, still, great fighter. But uh, I, I would love that fight. He's southpaw. That can give pro guys problems. But I've never had a problem fighting a southpaw. Yeah, these are all great fights. You know, even a tournament would be would be dope for this division. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's stacked. There's a, a lot of great fighters. You know, uh, we're all grinding, trying to make big things happen. But, you know, to, to shift for a second outside of the great 122-pound division, um, I'm sure you've heard about Ryan Garcia and Manny Pacquiao making a lot of buzz, a lot of headlines. Um, yeah. what, what do you think of that, if, if, that's, if that goes down? Uh, you know, if, if, if they were fighting for real, it'd be like, okay, something to watch. But an ex exhibition with uh, two active fighters who both have a belt, you know, I feel like that's a slap in the face, you know, like for the sport of boxing. Like, you know, if it's, you know, I just, I don't like it. I don't like. It. I mean, if they're fighting for real, you know, with their belts on the line and this, this, and that. Okay, let's let, let's see what's up. But an exhibition to where it doesn't count. Who does that? I hear you. Um, what would you think? Let, let's let's be optimistic here. Say say if they did get in the ring, it, it's a fight. Fight. Ryan moves up from thirty five to forty, or all the way up to forty seven. What what do you think if they did fight? You know, Ryan's. Height, speed, power, you know, Manny, Manny coming into 42, I think it is. What would you think of that, Raiz? Well, uh, Pacquiao has so much experience, uh, you know, explosiveness and everything. Uh, I, I would want to give the edge to Pacquiao, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Garcia caught him with some, with some good punches, you know, because Garcia is a hard hitter, hungry, young lion with something to prove, you know, so – it would be a really good fight to watch, but there's got to be something on the table. You know, you showed in the Vic Pacias fight that in and out, even at times, right, kind of awkward, just, just hard to deal with when a guy can move and go in and out. Um, Pacquiao has that himself. He's known famous for that. Like, how hard is that to deal with when you're dealing with a fighter who can do those, those types of things? Oh, well, it's hard because, you know, you, you try to come in or you think he's going to be there and then he's not or, he you know, he fades out and comes back in, you know, so you can catch a guy off guard or you can catch him off balance. Uh, some, sometimes the shot's not there, but you can create it with, with your feet, you know, so it's, uh, it's an advantage. Because it looked like, like with Pasillas, he has good timing, you know, and good shots, but he just couldn't ever find the time and find the distance. And is that – you think that's something that Pacquiao really gives these guys fits with, including maybe Garcia, if he's got to go ahead in there? Well, well, that, but also the foot speed, you know, because sometimes it just catches you off guard. Like, oh, he got in way quicker than what I thought. You know, you might have the reach down, but uh, how fast they close the distance, you know, might be surprising. So are, are you on the train of, like, 
if it's a fight, a sanctioned pro fight, I'm watching. If it's an exhibition, I'm not watching. Or, or will you be watching anyways and, and taking that for what it is? Or, I mean, like, if it was a real fight, oh, yeah, I, I, I would tune in. That's, that's a good fight. Exhibition, I'm kind of like, I mean, it's kind of, it just loses value to me. I just, uh, I probably wouldn't watch it if it's exhibition. Well, we'll see what happens, man. But in the meantime, you at 18 and 0, seven knockouts in a row, knocking on the door for a world title shot. Anything else you want to say? And do you think we see you in the ring in the next four or five months? You think? Or yeah, um, just you know, tune in, watch me in my career as I continue to grow, continue to just try to make uh, big things happen. I'm hoping to get back in about four or five months, uh, May June, uh, for a world title shot. You know, I feel like I paid my dues. I've earned it. I'm hungry. I'm ready to win it. So, uh, yeah. Thanks so much, Rice, man. Can't wait to see you fight again. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother.